This video is brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com slash YT. Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced with this video for LogRocket. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is going over this blog post, how to create and send push notifications React Native. So the first things first, what is a push notification and what is React Native? So you, hopefully you are familiar that React Native is a framework for building cross-platform mobile applications. Um, and basically allows you to use React, the super popular, very popular uh, front-end JavaScript framework but it allows you to use it to and use that all the same tools to build things uh, like mobile applications. Okay, um, it does have a slightly different API, so it's not like you can take your React web application code and just write it and then just say, hey, this is React Native now, but it's the same style, same similar syntax, almost the same, um, with just a few slightly different sort of ways of thinking about it because you're no longer targeting the DOM, but instead you're targeting um, sort of mobile view engines for iPhones and Android phones. So there's some different things conceptually, but it's the same premise. And now with some of the more recent React Native tools, you can actually compile your React Native code into a web application. Okay, so it's starting to try to get that feature parity with things like the, the Flutter compiler, which allows you to compile Dart code to Android, iPhone, web, and desktop. Okay, so very, very exciting technologies to be familiar with. But a lot of times people get confused with push notifications versus like an SMS or text notification. And the difference is when you do like an SMS, basically a text message, that's going over like a phone service. So there's a cost. So if you don't have like unlimited text messages, you know, getting all those text messages from your favorite apps can incur you a cost. Usually you'll have to use some sort of provider, I think something like a Twilio to be sending out those messages. And that could be a cost for the person who's building the app. So there's expenses, there's, there's, there's cost to doing SMS messaging. But with push notifications, there's zero cost on both sides. So this is becoming more and more preferred way for applications on your mobile phones to be sending you messages, um, which is pretty awesome, okay? Because they can just send you messages about like, hey, when there's a sale going on, um, oh, hey, you know, it's been this, while, this has been this long since you've opened up the app. Hey, don't forget your streak. You know, if you've, if you've done these apps where you have to kind of do things every day, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, for all the uh, Duolingo fans out there uh, learning multiple languages. Um, but yeah, so that's why push notifications are a great alternative to using SMS in your mobile applications for sending messages to the user because cost. But how do they work? Okay, so in this cool little diagram here, we can see that basically essentially what's going to happen is that your phone has to be registered with the messenger service. Now, depending on what kind of mobile phone you're targeting, there's two different notification services. Um, there's uh, the Google service, which is, I think, Firebase, which is what the F stands for. Um, and then there's actually right here, it tells you exactly what it is, Firebase Cloud Messaging. Yep. Okay. And Apple Push Notification Service, which is the Apple service. So you could use that. And essentially what you would do is that your phone would generate a push token. The push token basically just shows that, like, hey, this phone is, you know, has authentic basically what it does is going to put up that prompt for the user to say hey are you okay with push notifications and if they say allow push notifications it gives them it generates a token that shows that the user has said okay and then you're going to pass that token to these messenger services who can then uh send those messages back and since they're sending them with the token the phone knows okay because basically when the messenger service sends back the message they're sending it with the device token and since the device token is included with the message, your phone knows, okay, I'm allowed to display this message, and then the message pops up on your screen. Okay, or at least pretty much that's straightforward with, with the Firebase cloud messaging. Okay, with the Apple News service, a little bit, you can see it's like a, not exactly as straightforward, but it gets to the same place. But again, bottom line, it's generate token, ask user for permission, token comes back, that token goes to the service, but you have a third option, okay? You don't have to use Firebase Cloud Messaging or Apple News Service Expo. Expo, which is just a nice set of tools uh, that's created for React Native to make it easier to develop, especially if you don't necessarily have like a Mac computer or have the Android compiler heavy, you can 
you can use Expo to much more easily like deploy and build your React Native application. So Expo is growing in popularity quite quickly, and it has its own sort of notification setup that you can use at no cost. And essentially, it works the same way. A lot of it revolves around different functions. So I'm going to show you just like a, a setup, um, as you can see here in the code on the side, uh, of how that can be set up with the Expo service. Okay. So basically, here I just spun up a generic uh, React blank native project. So again, to do that, what you'd want to do is install the Expo CLI. So that, that's the command to install the Expo CLI. So that way you can generate fresh Expo projects. And then you would just do this command here, expo init, and then the name of your project. And then it'll ask you like what template you want. I use I used the blank template. So this is just made for me, blank React Native template, no frills, no nothing. And then I did install two libraries. Okay, so we go to the package.json. The libraries that weren't here out of the gate were, well, this I'm not using, but these two right here, expo notifications and expo permissions. Okay. So you would want to do an npm install, expo notifications, expo, in, I mean, npm install, expo permissions, uh, the notifications library, which is being deprecated. So, but the, it's not that like those features are going to be gone, is that they're being put, a lot of those functions are going to be moved towards different features in React Native, like location and other places where they may handle those notifications independently. So this is going to be the function that's going to allow us to like listen or the library is going to allow us to listen for notifications to make notifications. Um, and then this live permissions is where we're going to get the token from. Okay, so that's going to give us a function that's going to help generate that ask from the user. It's like, hey, can can we send push notifications? So those two libraries are what we're going to use. Okay, so this is going to be really be the key library for generating that token. So then what I did is I created this register.js file and the link to this GitHub repo, so you can actually take a look at these files, will be included in the video description. Um, so that way you can take a look at these files. But essentially right here, what I did is I imported from notifications, we imported get expo push token async. Okay, this function, what it does, it's gonna go actually get the token. Okay, this actually goes and fetches the token. Okay, now then this function here, schedule notifications async, is going to allow us just to sit there and say, hey, send the message in like 10 seconds, send the message in 60 seconds. We're doing this as just a, as a test of notifications. Okay, so essentially here we're gonna have this function that what this function does is going to be the function that actually registers your phone for push notifications. So going back to that diagram, yeah. like it's basically over here, we're just we're, we're creating the, the token. Okay, so we're gonna register the device. So essentially what we're doing here is we're creating this permissions object, okay? And we're just, this permissions, again, this is all from this permissions library that we imported here. So what we're doing is we're asking asynchronously for that permission token, okay? And basically that's gonna through the, create the little pop-up on the user screen saying, hey, do we have permission to do this? And then they're gonna respond, and that's gonna be what's held here in this permission object. Again, that's an asynchronous action because who knows how long it's gonna take them to push that button. Thus, why we have to use like async await. So we're saying, hey, wait for the user to push the button, say they are okay with allowing this, and then save that right in here. Okay, so that's what that's gonna do. Okay, so again, we'll just put the comment there. Ask user for permission. Okay, then it's gonna check, hey, has permission been granted? Now, if not, it's gonna end the function if there's no permission. Okay, it's just gonna be like, it's gonna return nothing, which just kills the function right there. And assuming that didn't, isn't the case, then the function will continue going. And what it's gonna do is that it's gonna go generate a token. Okay, so then we'll do this get expo push token async. So, Cause we, again, we wanna make sure we got permission first. We don't wanna just assume that it's okay for us to start getting uh, uh, push tokens, okay? And on top of it, what this is going to do when they hit, uh, when they give permission to notifications, what that's going to do is going to turn on that little switch in the app settings saying, okay, this app is allowed to send notifications, which will mean this function will be able to successfully get that notification key. Because if that's off, this function is going to fail in getting that token. Okay. So this is here. We're going to go get the push token. 
Okay, and again, that's asynchronous because who knows how long it's going to take. So, because it's relying on other processes to handle it. Um, so that's going to go get the token. That token, again, we're using a wait. So once the token has been retrieved, it'll get saved in this variable. And then in this case, I'm just returning the token to be used elsewhere. So this is going to be what, this is sort of the primary piece. Okay, this gets the token, um, you, which you may or may not need, depending on how you set up your notifications. But again, especially if you're using Firebase Cloud Messaging or um, basically Apple Push Notification Service, then you're definitely going to need that token. Okay, cool. So that's what this function is doing. And then this function here, create sender, what it's doing, it's first getting the token using our register function from before. Okay, and then what it's gonna do is, so this way you don't have to constantly be passing the token over and over again. Um, I'm within this create sender function, I'm creating a function that already kind of has the token baked in for sending push notifications. Now in this case, I'm using that schedule notifications uh, function from the notif from the notifications library right here. But in that case, what's gonna happen is that you don't necessarily need a token. It'll just send the message through Expo's notification system. So um, notice I don't have to pass a token anywhere. But theoretically, if I was using Firebase, uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging or Apple Push Notification Service, what I could do is here's where I would use the function for that service, pass it the token, and then create like a boilerplate function for sending notifications. Okay, and then I can then, so this all this is doing is just a function that's sending a notification, and then I can pass it what message I want. Theoretically, I probably should put the variable message in here, so that way it always passes whatever message I want. So again, create sender is the function. Inside the create sender function, I'm generating this send push notifications function, and then I'm returning it. Okay, and then I'm exporting the create sender function. That's essentially what's going on here. Okay, so now if I head over to my app.js, all I am doing is I'm creating state. Okay, this state here is just because I'm going to not have that function, that function for sending right away because it has to go through that whole process of getting the token and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm going to want to have to set that to state so that way I can rerun my component once I actually have that function in hand. Okay, then here's going to be a use effect, so that way we can do something immediately when the component opens up. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go create, use that create sender function to go create that function. That's going to end up returning a promise, because async functions always return a promise. Okay, so that's going to happen there. I'm going to use this add notification received listener function that's coming from the notifications library. Okay, so that's where that's coming from. And what that function does, it just allows me to sit there and say, okay, hey, if a notification occurs, so if Expo sends a notification and you notice, how do you want to handle it? Like, do I want to make like a pop-up message or do I want to just console log it? Or how do I want to handle that message that comes in? So what I do is I create this listener and I'm just passing it a function. So right now, all I'm doing is I'm just console logging the notification as it comes in. Okay, and then I'm going to take that, again, S, we save the promise from create sender. I'm going to just do a dot then off that promise, which should resolve to that function. And then I'm going to set the state to an object with that function nestled in there. Okay, and that's what this is. So it's essentially this is generating the function, which means it's going to generate the push token. Okay, assuming that like this, this particular app has, we haven't asked whether there's permission for notifications yet. And then sets the state to that adds that function to our state. Then here's another use effect. This one is for sending a notification. So basically what it's gonna do is on each, this will this this use effect will run anytime the sender state changes. So basically what's gonna happen is that after we update the state to include that function, this will run again. And then this if is just checking, hey, is it a function? Because I, again, I only wanna use it if I know the function's there. So I'm gonna check, hey, is, is sender.sendFunk a function? And if that's the case, then I'm just going to send a message hello. And again, the way I created this, this function is that it's going to send the message after 60 seconds. Okay. So if I try this out, if I do um, yarn start, that's going to start expo. As you can see over here. Now, again, I'm going to have to try this out on my phone. But I'm going to just keep this here so that way you can kind of see the messages as they come in. I'm going to open the expo app on my phone. 
Okay, so you can see this at work. Expo. There you go, Expo Go. And then I'm going to scan this little QR code here. And actually, the app just picks up right on it. So I click it, open up this in my app, opening up the application. Expo, because that's a cool thing about Expo, it lets you like easily test it out on your phone. Okay, as you can see here, these are some of the console logs from some of the stuff that I had in that code. And we're going to wait a minute. I should probably reduce the amount of seconds. But basically, in a minute, we're going to see that that notification is going to get sent. And it should say hello. Okay, so keep an eye right here, because again, I have it set to console log the message. So that message is going to appear down here. But again, you know, if this was your application, you could do something else with it, have it like do the, the pop up alert and all that fun stuff. But the idea is that using Expo, you can schedule notifications. There's other functions to so handle notifications in other ways. Um, but essentially, that's the process. Okay, that's the process of handling push notifications, um, which isn't too crazy. It's just, again, making sure that the user is given permission. Okay, so again, this is going to take a minute. Again, should have probably <laughs> reduced the number of seconds, but all good. And we should be getting this message soon. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's see here, notification coming. So see, there's there's my console log of notification coming. And then let's see here, do we see the word hello in here? I don't know, this one timed out. Okay, but you, you can see that the function did work. It did send over a message. Uh, oh no, there it is, hello. Okay, we sent the body hello. So see, so you'd get back this, this object, that's essentially the message. And so that way you have this metadata you can use for whatever purpose. And then you can just go in there, grab the content, log the body, and then there you can handle it as you wish. So that's how push notifications work in React Native. Okay. And uh, you guys have a great day. This is Alex Merced with this video for uh, Log Rocket. Ciao. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.